long time no vlog uh, my name is james if this is your first time to my channel if not then i'm glad to be back it's been a year and um interestingly enough i had taken off from vlogging and from uploading any new content in march of 2019 right before i went into spring break and i was planning on coming back um this year march of 2020 after our spring break but then this whole covid 19 crisis went down and i was scrambling to just like many other teachers to get online lessons as you can see i have a whiteboard here i have my anatomical models i'm teaching anatomy and physiology for the first time this year so that's something new i'm still teaching pre-ap chemistry compared to pre-ap chemistry where i had a lot of videos that i created over the past two years i had very few online videos that i created for anatomy and physiology because um, while it was my favorite high, my favorite course in high school and college and i'm surprised with how much i remember um it's my first time teaching it i told the students the first day of class this year i didn't know what the heck i was doing funny thing is that i had a majority of those students for pre-ap chemistry either last year or the year before last and so they knew me i knew them and so i was just honest with them but um unlike again like unlike pre-ap chemistry i don't have many videos and so i had to bring the models home my place is a mess and I'm having to create online lessons, not only just for anatomy and physiology, but for pre-AP chemistry as well. But I'll catch you up in another video, but I really wanted to talk and use this time um, to talk about uh, some things that I noticed with respect to feedback that I had received from my pre-AP chemistry students the past two years. If you hadn't seen that video, I'll leave a link here or down in the comment section below or in the description, was that when I had surveyed my pre-AP chemistry students, one of the things that I found out was that they preferred me to be in front of the board teaching in real time versus watching videos of me sometimes i had them watching videos of me in class because it allowed me to do like some blended learning or if i needed to have conferences with students or whatever the case may be it freed me up and but they were still able to get content or if i was absent they were still able to get content if i wasn't immediately right there in front of them however the student feedback to me was that um, not all of it uh, it was a mix, but there were some students that were very adamant that they wanted me in front of the board. They didn't want me in the videos. And I was confused because I'm thinking, well, it's me. I'm still like teaching in the same format that I were if I were to be in front of you. So why aren't you if you're telling me that you're not learning from me, like what's what's the issue? And I realized after like really just observing my students these years that the students um, they were passively watching the video. And what I mean by that is, um, even if like you embedded like some questions throughout the video, they were more focused in just trying to get through the video to finish it. They would skip around so that they could just find the answers to the questions. If there were questions in the video, or if you gave them a worksheet with questions, they were just trying to get through it to finish or to answer the questions without really trying to digest the material. And so over winter break, what I did was I created some videos and on the first day back this spring semester for both my anatomy and physiology and my pre-AP chemistry classes is I, we watched together a video of me, but I modeled, like if I were a student and I had to watch this video, you know, that my teacher just made, like this is what an active learner does versus a passive learner. And so like every maybe minute and a half to two minutes, I would stop the video and I would say, okay, let me close my notebook. This is what the teacher just said. I'm a student, I'm pretending I'm a student and this is what the teacher just did. And so like if the teacher, this is what I'm covering right now for my online um, module for anatomy and physiology. So the teacher just talked about um, some lymphatic orga organs. What are those organs that the teacher just talked about? Okay, so lymph nodes, um, the thymus, and I don't know what the last one was. And But I also modeled that it's okay, like you're not trying to get all that information correct because you're learning it. And so, but you wanna make sure that you're interacting with the material. You're not just trying to zoom through the video or just trying to find the answer. You're trying to yes of course you want to get the answers but then you want to stop and you want to digest it so whether you do this out loud you um, write it down you are watching the video with a partner in class or maybe outside of class maybe you quiz each other so what did the teacher just you know talk about and you do this every so like every minute and a half two minutes and so then you play the video you watch another minute and a half to two minutes then you stop the video you try to digest what you just watched but then you go back and you're thinking okay what did i learn at the very beginning of this video so then you're trying to digest all that material at once so you're reviewing you watch another minute and a half to two minutes you stop 
digest what you just learned, but then you try to process everything that you learned up until that point. And you keep doing it and doing it until you get to the end. And it's actively synthesizing and interacting with the material over and over and over and over again. So that way you're not just saying it once or twice, you're saying it and you're interacting with it multiple times. Again, as I said earlier, I would watch my students and they would zoom through the video or they would skip around or they would just try to get the information and then they were, they said they were done. And yes, there are some students that can do that, but for a majority of my students, um, that for some of them have gaps in their learning, they're not able to do that. They might for short-term memory have that, but then they come back because we're on an AB block schedule or they come back the next class period and some of them may have forgotten it already or a week later they can't recall it and so it's how do you get them to keep that information not just short term but long term so i came on here to say that because i think right now with the whole push and district scrambling to make teachers create online lessons is that if students weren't exposed to that first of all and teachers weren't creating that then i'm, I'm just i'm gonna just think about my student population, then it's going to be very difficult for them if they didn't have that exposure, they're not used to that, and teachers are not used to putting together some type of like scaffolding system through their online platform to help them be successful, then it's going to be challenging for them. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, what are your experiences if you've done any type of online learning? Or have you noticed things that I notice with like the video platforms in, in regard to students saying that they dislike watching videos as opposed to the teacher being in front of the classroom? I'll create videos in the future now that I pretty much stuck at home and most likely we won't be going back to school and I'll catch you up as to what I've been doing. I'm also in an online master's program for chemistry. That's a hot mess, but again, I'll talk about that in another video, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts about what you think about what I talked about in regard to active video watching versus passive video watching. And then also like, how do you think this is going to go? How's it going for you if you're a teacher right now, like in class, is it going pretty well? Um, are your students, are you able to contact your students? How are your students responding, etc. I hope that everybody stays safe. Um, don't go out unless you really have to go out um, because we're trying to keep the numbers down um, so that way our hospitals and the people on the front line aren't overtaken by this whole COVID-19 mess. As always, thanks for watching and until my next vlog, bye.